all right hello youtube so something that you guys know about me is that i'm indian and something that i know about you guys is you guys just love to troll the living shit out of me uh i've been saying this multiple times in the past i'm gonna say it again i'm not the best at the stuff that i do i'm a beginner i started programming in early 2023 and i started learning reverse engineering about a month ago i started learning the c programming language or the programming language that's responsible for you know uh making the earth rotate and revolve around the sun i started learning that about two months ago i have a few projects in the c programming language so i'm not really that good with the few, with the stuff that i do but i've been reading my comments i've been reading my discord dms my discord server messages and all the kinds of stuff are either fucking dox threat either telling me that how bad i am or how i need to improve on my skills now, of course i agree i need to improve on my skills but uh you guys telling me that i need to improve on my skills uh depicts only one thing that you guys are good with your skills right if you guys are not good with your skills how can you tell me that i'm bad i also assume that my community is filled with hackers now why do i assume that because my the discord server messages are filled with this stuff uh that i don't really get people talking about how to exploit stuff people talking about how to reverse engineer stuff now of course i have some things banned in my discord server so that you guys cannot you know fucking get me banned off of discord but yeah uh, reading the messages they do tell me that i have some uh, good guys on the server that know what they're doing now what do you guys do when you build a community filled with hackers and people that are just finding an opportunity to uh, boot you off the internet uh, you don't tell them your real name you don't uh, download anything that they send but what do i do when i get around a community of hackers uh, i give them access to my computer All right. So in this bit, we'll be setting up a virtual machine where you guys can run your program. Uh, now I'm doing this because I don't feel like uh, actually allowing you guys to use my base machine for the stuff that you guys are gonna do. So we're gonna set up a virtual machine. Now I'm gonna check the security settings just in case we have something left out. Now we have set up virtual machine with no network bridge between host and VM. So this basically means that I have to give my virtual machine a separate network to work on. For that we'll be using NAT. Now I'm gonna explain in a bit what this NAT does. We're gonna press OK, and the first part is done. Also, I have to check the shared folders. I think I don't have any, but I'm gonna check just in case. I don't have any shared folders, right? Uh, so the first part is done. Now I have to set up a secure connection with backend servers without IP leaks. Now this sentence doesn't make any sense. I know. But this make but this like made sense in my head when I was you know planning this video out. So what I mean by this is basically when you guys have a virtual machine that's running on its own little network, it's still pretty insecure. For example, this is my router. It's present in India. It's in India, and this is Google.com. This is my host machine. And this is my virtual machine. Now I'm drawing my virtual machine uh, partially combined with my host machine. I'm gonna explain this in a while. So this condition is basically NAT, where it is inside my host machine, but it is not inside my host machine. Now for you, this machine is inside my host machine. Like clearly, this virtual machine is inside my host machine. But for uh, something like my uh, router, this is a separate machine. This doesn't see. Uh, this machine as a part of my host machine. So what this does is this gives my virtual machine a separate IP address. This is exactly what I need to make this secure. And this also gives my base machine another IP address. We are going to call this 192. Since this is going to begin with 192, I'm pretty sure. And this is going to begin with a 10, I'm pretty sure. So we are going to call the IP address for this machine 10. This is the local IP. And this is the local IP for this. It's 192. Uh, now my router has an IP of, for example, we can take this one to three. Okay, so the thing that goes on uh, between these network communications is that, for example, if I open google.com on my virtual machine, I can go google.com. What this basically did was my virtual machine asked my router to open google.com and this noted the IP 10 and also noted the request that it made that was to Google and it opened google.com. The Google website got the IP address of my uh, router. It didn't get the IP address of my virtual machine, which is 123. So now Google knows that I got communicated by the IP address 123 at this time, and this and it wanted this, this information, right? 
So it basically got the IP address of my router and not my base machine. This uh, entity, this is secure only till your uh, private uh, private network. This doesn't exceed to the public network. For the public network, your router is the key. Your router is the only thing that's going to communicate with the public network. Your individual machines do not hold any significance or value in the public network. Uh, now, of course, you can also attack networks within a private network, but that is discouraged due to the use of firewalls. I have firewalls in all of my devices, so that's pretty impossible for anyone to attack my private uh, private devices. The only machine that doesn't have a firewall is my virtual machine, so I can attack my virtual machine with ease, but they cannot attack my base machine with ease. Uh, so yeah, the private connection is pretty secure, but we also have to secure the public connection. For example, someone can sit here with a server. They have a single port open and they just run a script on my virtual machine, which they are going to do. I'm pretty sure they're going to rat my virtual machine. I'm like 99% sure there are, there's going to be rats. Uh, now what this virtual machine is going to do, it's going to ask the router to send a request to this server, right? And the server gets the IP address of my router and I don't want random discordians getting my router IP address, right? They can just harass me, fucking DM me my router IP address. They can go like, hey, Koala, is this your IP address? One, two, three. And I will go like, oh my God, how did this guy get my IP address <laughs> when I was the one who genuinely gave it to them? All right. So for this, we can, uh, we have a few options. If you guys might have heard about proxies or VPNs. Now, these two work in almost the same way, uh, except a few differences. That's bandwidth and stuff like that. I'm not really sure. But yeah, these two work in almost the same ways. Uh, now I can use a proxy or I can use a VPN. So what this is going to do is my machine is going to ask my uh, router to always send requests via this IP address that my VPN is going to give me. For example, I can ask it to refer to google.com or to open google.com and it's going to ask my VPN to fetch google.com for me. So this fetches the google.com, this send the google.com sends the data to the VPN server, the VPN server sends this to my Wi-Fi and my Wi-Fi sends it back. So my Wi-Fi's IP address is only known by the the VPN or the VPN provider that's uh, providing this VPN service to my router. Now, if this makes sense, this means if I have a VPN, uh, the server is going to get the IP address of my VPN and not my router. So this is the main point here. Uh, we'll also be using, I think I had something saved up. Set up Python without libraries, enable Windows Defender, I think. Windows Defender is enabled. Yeah, it is enabled. Uh, we also have, okay, we don't, never mind. Windows Defender is enabled. Disable the execution of any rootkits to prevent CS damage. Now, of course, I'll be running the malware in non-admin mode to reduce the, you know, any serious damage to prevent any serious damage. We'll be executing malware in normal mode. Uh, limit the VM resources. Uh, VM resources are pretty limited. I don't think six gigs of RAM is any. <laughs> it is pretty bad, but yeah, just let's just go for it. I don't care. Disable the execution. All right. Uh, we'll be installing Python now, without any libraries. Uh, which means we'll also be. Removing out also for the VPN that I was talking about, we'll be using Proton VPN. Now, there has been a few allegations uh, on Proton VPN regarding it being malware and spyware. Uh, now, I don't really care since I'm on a virtual machine, I've, never, I've, I've barely used this VPN on my base machine. I've used it sometimes in my videos in my past videos. If I don't think those videos are still up, I think it was in the uh, decompiling. Uh, I don't really know. I used this once, but that video got down. Right, installing Python. We are going to add this to path. Use admin privileges when installing. Okay, customize and then documentations. We don't need those. We need this. We need this. Uh, install Python for all users. Add Python to environment. Create shortcuts. Associate files. Precompile standard libraries. We are going to remove. Actually, let's just add standard libraries. Right. Uh, I'm gonna throw in a fast time lapse if this takes time.
all right python has been set up on this machine on this virtual machine as we should say it uh for the final bit we'll be checking the ip address of my virtual machine and the ip address of my base machine just to make sure that these are actually different machines and my router is not actually mistaking them for the same machine uh, i'll be also installing the vpn the proton vpn that we have installed over here i'll be installing this off camera since i don't want to leak my email and password for proton uh, so yeah we will also be installing and setting that up uh, ip config i can go ip config so this is the ip address for this is the private ip address for my a virtual machine 10.0.2.15 that is the gateway for the host machine i can go ip address and the ip address is in this range 192.168.1.6 till 24 so this is the ip address for my host machine and this is the ip address for my uh, virtual machine which means that our router is actually identifying this machine as a different machine so with that being said as much as i want to announce the bot right now and just malware my uh virtual machine right now i cannot since it's like 2 40 2 34 in the morning all right we'll do that tomorrow the next day all right so i have the virtual machine set up it's the next day and i have the virtual machine set up uh i also have this malware that's backdooring my machine and i have the bot the discord bot that's connected to this so it executes all the commands that the community sends in the discord server i'm going to check this once uh before that i also have to check if i have any app data or any user data that can potentially be leaked uh, this includes basically the data for Microsoft Edge or any data, for example, Discord tokens or any browser cookies. I haven't really used this virtual machine, so I don't think there's going to be any data. But still, I'm going to check it once. Uh, this is probably going to be in Microsoft. 
Use the data. I'm just gonna delete all of this. Uh, we're gonna skip all this stuff that's not able to be deleted. Uh, we have all the function files and browser metrics. This is a PMF file. We're gonna delete this as well. Uh, you know, this file is open in Microsoft Edge. Now I don't think Edge is open. I'm going to kill Microsoft Edge permanently. Using this, uh, we can. This is exactly why I don't like Microsoft Edge. It's just running in the background, consuming my memory and RAM. Now we can delete all of this since Microsoft Edge is closed. Right now that we have no user data in the Edge. I don't have any more browsers installed. I have I had Discord installed to configure the files, but I uninstalled that and also removed the files for that Discord since the token might still be retrieved if you have the files. Uh, also in the roaming, I have Python, I have Microsoft, I think I have Edge over here as well. I don't have any. Uh, I have some Discord files over here. I have the startup folder. This is okay. I don't have any data on this machine now. There are just these two things. That's the main. This is the malware, and this is the bot. Uh, we are also going to check the bot ones. So this bot, I think I played the coding, uh, whatever the sped up coding video. Uh, if I didn't, I'm going to play it now. So what this basically does is this. If I run the bot. So the bot is running now. This is the bot, and the prefix is by execute print hello world. If I go like this, it's going to execute this on my machine, and it's also going to add my user ID to the file so that I cannot execute the same command or I cannot work or I cannot use this bot again. It's just going to blacklist me once my user ID is added, and it's also going to log the commands that people have used for me to make a video on right so as soon as this works uh we are pretty good to go this is working uh all right so the announcement is ready the bot is ready i also have the vpn ready and i have the ethernet also running so let's just see how it goes Also, going to unlock the channel and allow everyone to send messages. Right. Now we are going to wait for some responses or some executions on our virtual machine. Uh, I'm going to ask my moderators and my admins to keep watch on this as well. Just in case something goes wrong, but yeah, so this is working now and we'll be back in about two or three hours, uh, four or five hours whenever the event ends. So yeah. Three hours later. <laughs> There's like a bunch of fucking calculators running because someone just threw this command and now it's just booting all these calculators in my virtual machine uh yeah <laughs> i don't know how to stop this i will just wait and watch how it ends there's been fucking new ways of people just trying to abuse the virtual machine and it's fucking funny to check out uh there was a flood of calculators and i cleared that i had to relaunch the board but it's running again uh someone just flooded entire calculators on my virtual machine <laughs> uh they are trying to get the bot token somehow see so takes out reply token and i don't think these guys realize that this is not how the bot is working i have a few people that know what they're doing this guy's actually trying to reverse shell the machine and i'm pretty sure he can do it because like i already assumed this when i was uh working on the internal network so yeah it is pretty easy to reverse shell uh let's <laughs> it's been like 10 or 15 minutes of 
me making that announcement and people are already trying all this different stuff uh i'm pretty scared not gonna lie so yeah let's just check out what uh things they do we're closing the auto mode for some time uh it's causing some major issues with people not being able to run their code and stuff uh, they're trying at their absolute best to do something with my machine and they just cannot so yeah the auto mode is now closed auto mode is disabled if i find anyone doing any naughty stuff i'll ban him okay gee this fucking video is taking a lot of time oh my god i have to sit here for like the next two or three hours just to watch all of these stuff uh and watch this virtual machine also someone did uh spam my entire folder so now there's no going back uh yeah there are some people who have executed the code majority of my community is left he's on windows bro why are you trying to see more <laughs> uh remove back to give the back door bot administration permissions Oh god. Uh I don't know what to do at this point. I'm just waiting for something to happen. Uh like it's all it's all fucking failed attempts except this one and another one. Some guy got my IP address. Uh the IP address of the virtual machine. Uh the ip address of my vpn <laughs> so that was a pretty good call i already assumed that someone's going to get my ip address and they did so uh, getting a vpn really helped me out uh i have to sit here for the next 3 or 4 hours uh, if you guys are enjoying this video please do consider subscribing these videos take a lot of fucking time and brain power to make <laughs> i'm just fucking losing my mind all right it has been some time now and i announced the event in at 3 pm afternoon and it is currently midnight so it has been some time i closed the bot at 7:30 pm so the event had a run time of about 4 hours but at that point i was also tired sitting at my setup sitting at my table not being able to go outside because almost every minute or every second there was some uh, funny stuff going around that i didn't want to miss so yeah it was a pretty uh it was pretty tiring first of all we are going to close the connections for this virtual machine so that we can test out okay it is already closed i will i had this set to nat it's now not att attached that means the virtual machine doesn't have a network interface or a network system now if you open this virtual machine it shouldn't have an internet connection which means it shouldn't be able to send any uh, information if this machine is currently routed or has any active malware this shouldn't be able to talk to the back end servers right now since the internet is down for this virtual machine now another thing for the entire duration of this event my base machine was purely unharmed nothing uh, almost nothing happened to my base machine there was there were no network leaks no memory leaks nothing to my to my host machine that's a good thing i'm not trying to jinx it now right uh, okay my virtual machine is lagging the fuck out also i had to remove some files for the virtual machine to actually boot up in front of you guys uh there was there was a file in my startup folder that was basically launching a couple thousand uh command prompt windows as soon as the machine <laughs> booted up uh, i had to remove that because it was of course not allowing me to record the video but besides that we are going to check once if there is anything left in the startup folder start menu programs and the startup so there is absolutely nothing in the startup folder uh that means this machine didn't get any serious damage uh now another thing uh i didn't really mention this to you guys in the beginning but 
uh during the runtime of the event a lot of people were asking me to run the python in administration mode so that they can do all sorts of funny stuff in on my machine and also disable windows defender because they wanted to do all sorts of funny stuff and i went ahead and i did that because like why not just do whatever the fuck you want so my windows defender was disabled for the entire duration and the bot was running in administration mode for the entire duration of 3 hours i think the first hour was uh, the bot just simply running with windows defender on and in normal mode but after that i also disabled the server auto mode i disabled windows defender i also ran the exe in i mean i ran the bot in administration mode so that they can just do everything that they want uh, all right looking on the machine we have some stuff over here now as far as i remember uh, before ending the task i mean before a uh, beginning the event i had microsoft edge disabled uh, now what i mean by that is i have the updates uh, killed i had the windows updater installed that means uh, windows microsoft edge couldn't run properly so it was crashing but now that i reboot the machine i see that this is installed again so for some reason someone probably uh, restarted the machine while i was gone or something so the windows machine just went into an update mode and repaired itself that happens a lot so yeah this was reinstalled and this was a file that i had to make for a user since he couldn't store his own logs or something so that was a bug in the bot uh, now uh, regarding that there were some bugs in the bot that uh we discovered during the runtime of the event and that's why i was uh sitting at my laptop for about 4 hours and 5 hours just to make sure that nothing actually goes wrong or people actually get to do their stuff on like do the stuff that they are intended to do in the event so that's why i was sitting there uh, about 4 hours or 5 hours in the event i was there the entire time i was reading the chats i was read i was looking at my virtual machine i was configuring it constantly non stop i was uh fixing any live bugs that were in the bot so this is the uh this is like the peak uh without any bugs bot code that we have and these are the logs uh, of course you guys are going to see this these files these were done by some user as well all these files contain is the word sex for some reason they didn't really get anything else to write could have written anything could have been their uh, social links could have been some uh you know some absurd shit but no all they went with was sex i mean got to respect the troll uh right so moving on we're going to check the logs so these are all the users that ran their commands in the bot some users were banned as well because they ran some inappropriate shit so there were around uh i think how many users are these these are 12 users there were 17 users five or six of users were banned so there were around 17 and 18 users that ran their code in the bot so we're going to look through the relevant ones i'm not going to show you the ones that were just useless so for example this guy just printed some stuff i want manager i want management team windows vista i think this is my admin he probably wants management so that's why he did this uh this guy just open calculators i'm going to play the clip right now that it was a fucking pain in the ass to take care of uh this guy tried his best to reverse my my machine but for some reason he didn't realize that the program is not really running in admin mode and when i enabled admin mode and asked him to do this again he said he didn't want to so i mean okay this guy tried to print the bot token for some reason he thought this was going to work uh this is not how discord bots work you might need to reply to the to the message or just make the bot send the token somehow officially melon now i'm i'm going to save this one for the last this is probably the most hilarious one uh menis far this guy I, i okay this guy I don't know what this guy was trying to do but for some reason he didn't read the rules properly uh I don't think I mentioned that it was a windows virtual machine but everyone was talking about it so it's his fault he, did, he wasn't active in the community while it was uh, all going down he thought that 
we were using a linux virtual machine so we just dropped this weird shell command instead of a python code this is of course not gonna work what this guy was trying to do is download the file that was hosted on this apparently this is the file name and then he's gonna chmod 777 so this is basically giving the file this file a uh, read write and execute permissions on all three users for linux then he's gonna execute the file and he's gonna give my username for this user so he's executing the file for my user uh, this could have worked this could have certainly worked if we were using shell commands and if we were on a linux machine but uh, yeah that's not the case okay this guy was i don't know what what to even talk about what to even say to this guy uh, it turns out that these guys are not the only ones who were trying to get my discord bot token there was an entire gc of three or four guys that were planning on getting the bot token and nuking my discord server i mean if that's a priority sure go for it uh now this guy tried to reverse my virtual machine but he failed and he asked me for uh, for whitelisting about two three times and i was like okay sure dude you can run two or three whitelists i don't mind so this is his latest command that actually ran what this is doing is this is uh he is first of all creating files 2000 files to be specific uh with i now uh, i don't think he's okay he is appending the value in range for i in range byte was here dot txt he's writing byte was here then he's starting a window cmd window if this works byte was here i don't really know what this command is supposed to do in the uh in the command prompt so this is a pretty shit method of flooding someone's system but okay uh then he was creating files in all the directories i'm guessing if not to westpath exist yeah it's in almost all the directories but for some reason these guys don't realize is that uh the bot was hosted in this folder so for the bot the only directory that was uh, accessible was this directory so all they could do or all they could paste their files on is this directory but when i ran the bot in admin permission that made the bot accessible to almost all the directories in the system so that's why you see this file byte was here so this is the command byte was here dot txt byte was here dot txt and this should have byte was here inside of it yep so this is after the bot was running in admin mode before that the bot didn't knew that there were directories outside of its own directory uh then he also downloaded i am guessing images branding response.get response status 200 with file open f dot writer response dot content i okay so i i'm guessing this is the wallpaper that this guy downloaded so it's a google logo he probably wanted to change my background to this uh to this image but failed midway okay that's a good try that's appreciable and then he just prints my public ip address which is of course again this is uh, a vpn ip address this is not my actual public ip address so okay this was a good try he tried to do something at least right moving on uh now most of these guys these guys just printed something out and just trying to do something this guy is responsible for all this flood all this flood is done by this single guy now of course this is pretty harmless this didn't do much to my machine it just says sex like about a hundred or two hundred times 999 to be precise i'm not sure if this is 999 files okay these are 999 files okay <laughs> all right so these are 999 files saying sex that that makes sense uh this guy also printed something out i'm pretty sure yeah he also printed hello world i was trying to do something as well yeah i was checking the bot constantly all right now to the most interesting execution of this entire event was of this guy officially melon now this guy downloaded an entire backdoor into my virtual machine and actually made me actually shat my pants 
So uh, I was working on a bug in the bot and this guy randomly downloads this <laughs> backdoor in my machine and sends like these voice notes, uh, text to speech voice notes. He was like, W, what shall I do next? XD. Then he just randomly starts playing this on my <laughs> machine. And I, and I kid you not, I genuinely jumped out of my fucking chair. I was working on the bot, if you can see in the background. I don't really know if you can see, it, see this, but I was working on the bot in the background. But yeah, this genuinely made me fucking jump out of my seat and just fucking cry in fear. <laughs> so yeah, this was pretty... This was probably the best one that I got. Uh, he also pulled almost all of my information. Uh, this was his rat, this was his malware that he was using. It had some stuff, he could record my screen, he could uh, show display information about specific, all these uh, commands that he could use on me. He could uh, crypto clipper thread on victim's PC. This would have been so fucking bad. I just realized this would have been real bad to actually witness. He also got my IP address and stuff. Uh, he screenshotted my screen for uh, proof that he did all of this uh, he also got my system uh, information now this is of course all virtual machine this is not this has nothing to do with my base machine all of this stuff he just got all of this total physical memory 6 gb 6144 mbs that's 6 gbs so yeah he did he did the best i'm not gonna lie he did the absolute best in this event a lot of people didn't participate, I don't know why. Uh, they, they just didn't want to run the code. They, I, I'm guessing they didn't want to give me content, I mean that's fair. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. This machine is still operable, except I have a backdoor and potentially two or three remote access trojans still active on this virtual machine. I could try to find them out and make a new video about it. Uh, me just removing and debugging and just entirely cleaning this virtual machine up. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see me do that. I can certainly do that. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if there's anything left to do other than asking you guys to subscribe. This has taken me some time. This has taken me not some time this has taken me a lot of time to record and to work on i was working on the backdoor for about a week i was working on the bot for about a week so that's where my two weeks went and this week i'll be editing and working on this video so if you guys just like the video or just barely found this video entertaining at all do consider subscribing i'm trying my best to uh, get the best content out for you guys that i can with that being said i will catch you guys in the next video uh, do consider subscribing do join my discord server drop me a dm on my discord and yeah i will talk to you guys next time see ya